Hello and welcome to Talking Europe, France Van Katz, a weekly talk show about all things European. I'm Luke Brown and thanks for joining us. Today's guest has been described as the conscience of Italy. She served as Italy's foreign minister, was the European commissioner before that and has been an MEP since 1979. She first entered the Italian parliament as an MP in 1976, having cut her teeth in social activism campaigning for abortion rights in Italy. Emma Bonino, Senator for Rome and figure of Italy's Radical Party, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Now, you're a liberal, a moderate, a pro-European. Last year's elections in Italy saw those positions rejected by voters. Have you any hope that your values can once again become electable in 2019? Uh, I don't know uh, if I will manage to convince my fellow Italians that populism, nationalism and all these kind of uh, illusions are bad, not only for the Italians but for Europe uh, as such, in the current environment, uh, uh, international environment, uh, politically speaking. So uh, I, I, I am positive um, and I think that uh, populism is exactly against people whatever they pretend. And I also think that uh, the, uh, uh, now in my country, by the way, there is already a change. Nobody, nobody, neither the Five Star nor the Liga North are uh, uh, talking anymore or, or on, of leaving the Euro uh, or leaving Europe, but that is over. I think that the Brexit has uh, taught something uh, to, to the Italian leaders uh, and people. Um, but yes, it still remains uh, Italian first. Uh, that is, a, a, in a, such a globalized world, this is a total illusion. And it's not good uh, neither for the economy nor for our freedom. I don't deny there are problems, but, and that maybe the European uh, engine is a little bit old, but that is not, uh, 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 reason enough to to simply uh, bring it down. You said in the past that uh, one of the problems, one of the solutions to Europe's problems, uh, is more federal Europe. Is there really an appetite for that in, in Italy in 2019? No, I think there is no appetite in many countries because populism and nationalism is not only a pro an Italian problem. Take the Visegrad or take the, even the, the United States, uh, take uh, other parties who are campaigning to destroy Europe, uh, uh, to destroy. I think that seriously, uh, nobody wants to leave Europe, frankly speaking. Uh, because no one is uh, so stupid. We have Putin on one side, China on the other side, Trump, who is not exactly a friend of Europe, and the Mediterranean, which is in, on fire since uh, years. Um, so uh, uh, I don't, in this uh, fragile and very dangerous uh, uh, environment, I don't think that 27 small states uh, a nation, one by one, can uh, have any relevance uh, uh, and any importance in any uh, international uh, uh, trade or uh, international landscape. OK, let's turn now to uh, the uh, European elections of 2019, which will take place uh, in the next uh, month. You're one of the team of leaders for the uh, European Liberal Democrats, the ALDE group. Uh, what are your ambitions for these elections in, in 2019? Well, the team leader, the, the team that we have organized uh, for possible uh, elections are seven, five women and two men coming from different countries of, uh, of Europe. Uh, and the expectation that we have is to create a group or to uh, reinforce a group who could push forward the European project. We have had uh, 20 um, more here of, uh, let's say, negotiation uh, and leadership of PPA uh, and the socialists. I think that they uh, have lost a little bit of uh, spirit. Hmm? Uh, and uh, uh, I also think that uh, an important uh, affirmation of the liberals can really give some more enthusiasm, uh, more strength, more determination 
to change this status quo and to move forward. More power to the European Parliament in connection with the national one, more transparency from the head of state to summit that is the most opaque institution to my knowledge. Uh, the, the agenda is not known, the debate even less, the results out of unanimity never happens. So it's an engine that has lost uh, a bit of speed and spirit in a world that is changing so quickly and so swiftly. You mentioned there the, the need for more power uh, for the Liberal Democrat group uh, in the European Parliament. Recent months have very much seen uh, ongoing negotiations between the group and uh, Emmanuel Macron's uh, En Marche here in France. Where does that alliance stand? Are you still hopeful it will happen? Of course, his MEPs could be very useful to your group. Well, that's, uh, it depends on the result of the election. I don't uh, buy the issue that it's already all decided, that we can decide today. Uh, what, what next or what after May 26th, because that is not respectful um, with uh, uh, the, the people who are going to election. I hope, for instance, in my country that they will give a, a big surprise to our uh, populist government, for instance, and I'm fighting for that. It's nothing has to be taken for granted. But do you still want an alliance with Emmanuel Macron? Yes, why not? Uh, uh, I think that some of the points that Macron made um, time ago and has repeated recently uh, uh, can be very useful to push forward. I also think that the five and eight points that the Liberals are putting on reform, both on the institution and on the policy, are also very, very important. So, uh, like at the national level, also at the European level, then is a question of uh, uh, power sharing. Mm. Uh, we are, I'm not so naive not to know that. And so power sharing means uh, the, the, how, how much strength you get uh, in the elections. Now, the European elections have long held a paradox. Its critics say the uh, European Union is undemocratic and all the while a voter turnout in European elections has been steadily falling. At the last vote in 2014, a turnout was only 42% here in France. In the Rust Belt in the north of the country, abstention is even higher. Many see Europe as part of the problem and find hope in Eurosceptic politicians such as Marine Le Pen. Let's take a closer look. Bully les mines is a typical town in the north of France. It had its heyday in the midst of the Industrial Revolution, mainly thanks to the activity of coal mines. But its glory days are long gone. Unemployment is over 11 percent. That's three points above the national average. Here, the European elections are not a priority. Robert Billet is a former coal miner. His opinion of Europe has gotten steadily worse over the years. We were happier in France before the European Union. We are subjected to its laws by force. There is no more freedom. No more. Everything is run by Europe, but in a bad way. He is not the only one who's disappointed. The closure of the coal mines and the relocation of many industrial activities had locals feeling abandoned. Many blame the European Union for the breakdown of the region's economy. The perception here is the EU, with its rules and regulations, has added to the difficulties. For many, Brussels is deaf to the community's local issues and priorities, and that there's little point in voting. They make promises and yet nobody does anything to lead France on a good path. But frankly, it does not really matter to me. It's over. I'm not voting anymore. When you vote for a party that never wins, it's exhausting. Things need to change and nobody wants to take action. So we're going to stop voting. Anger at the European Union has led to an upsurge in nationalist sentiment. At the last European election in 2014, the far-right National Front won more than 43% of the votes in the region. But Europe inspires either rejection or indifference. Just one-third of voters in bully les mines even bothered to vote at the last European election. Now, Emma Bonino, do you think uh, the situation here in France and in Italy, uh, do you think the ideals of the European project have been forgotten? No, no. I think that it's the contrary. Uh, they are taken for granted. Uh, the, the freedom of moving, of uh, 
uh, everywhere in Europe. Um, um, the, the, the human rights uh, promotion, the freedom of uh, uh, capital business people, um, the many good things that Europe has promoted and uh, implemented in the past 60 years by the young people, uh, by many people, are taken for granted, as if they had always been uh, there in Europe. On the contrary, Europe has been uh, uh, the most uh, 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 bloody, bloody uh, continent uh, till 60 years ago. But it's true that the, this uh, process, and democracy is a process, and uh, Europe is a process, uh, the best one we have uh, invented, uh, as, uh, uh, um, um, let's say, uh, has not been uh, uh, quick enough to, to understand the changes uh, in economic, social, life, technology, etc., happening in the world. So it looks a little bit old, which is true. We are stick, uh, uh, stuck to the Lisbon Treaty, which belongs almost to another era. Uh, uh, but that is not uh, a good reason not to go forward, but simply um, to, to sink the boat. The boat is a little bit old is inadequate in many policies, but that is a good reason for reform, is not a good reason to sink the boat. Okay, you say that the progress uh, in the EU uh, is taken for granted, but Italy, a lot of the criticism of the EU uh, is on subjects such as austerity and migration, which many people in Italy think is justified, given, of course, that uh, Italy perceives itself to have been abandoned on the migration question by Brussels. Many of its citizens feel they're being punished because of, of austerity uh, provoked by their politicians. Is that criticism not justified? Uh, yeah, but I, I don't understand why they put the blame on Europe. On immigration, immigration, integration, uh, is not a power that state have given to the European Commission. They have taken and kept uh, uh, this uh, uh, subject for themselves. So they should blame themselves, not blaming something, the European Commission or Europe, uh, because it, that couldn't make it. The same for Italy. Take Italy. We don't have growth. Uh, but that is not because of austerity. It's because we have a, an enormous public debt, uh, which has an enormous cost out of sheer interest, 65 billion just this year to pay the interest of our public debt. Europe has nothing to do with that. You, we have done this, uh, made this public debt in the past 20 years out of our own. So don't put the blame where doesn't have to be put. Put the blame on the Commission on uh, something else, I don't know what, but put the blame on national government where it really stands. Okay, and if we turn this issue around, uh, how big a threat do you think to Europe uh, is Italy's current government, Government, the coalition between the populist Lega of uh, uh, Matteo Salvini and the uh, anti-system uh, Five Star Movement? Well, I, obviously, uh, it's a problem because simply it doesn't belong only to Italy. You can see it in Urban, you can see it in Hungary, you can see it in the United States, so, uh, uh, it, or Brazil, if you want to. Um, and that is uh, uh, exactly the mood that is spreading uh, all over, and that's why it's so necessary to fight back to make people understand, not to vote only out of guts, but making some choice. And I think that the nightmare after the referend Brexit referendum uh, begins to make many people more reasonable and understand what they are talking about. In my country, nobody, no one, uh, never uh, speaks of uh, talks of leaving the Euro or leaving the European Union. They are just for the moment limiting, unfortunately, to put the blame on Europe where the blame, blame is to put on national, at national level.
Okay. Uh, one question about the relations between uh, France and Italy, which have really hit rot rock bottom uh, under uh, the current government in Italy. Uh, one reason is how to deal with the influx of migrants. Emmanuel Macron wants to rethink the Schengen uh, freedom of movement zone. Is reducing freedom such as that uh, a solution that you think is acceptable? No, I think simply that you cannot... Um exchange uh, uh, freedom and, and uh, security. That uh, is not the problem. But it's true that we had uh, Italy and France uh, quite uh, um, friction on Libya, for instance, uh, even uh, in these exactly days. That means that uh, the fact that we don't have a common foreign policy uh, doesn't help to uh, be relevant in some conflict that are uh, of great interest for us. Take the Mediterranean the, uh, and, and all the problems around there, economic or immigration or terrorism or etc. If we continue simply fighting each other, we will go nowhere. Okay. Uh, and one final question. Um, socially and economically and politically, uh, do you get the impression that Italy is going backwards on some of the issues that you've been fighting for uh, throughout your career, be they abortion rights or human rights or migration rights? Yes. On civil rights, uh, there is a risk, a real danger that we go backward. And I think that now, finally, uh, there is a sort of wake-up call because on civil rights and other issues, we are really in the danger of going backwards. Emma Bonino, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to answer our questions. And that's all we do have time for. Do stay tuned for more European debate with my uh, colleague Catherine Nicholson after this short break. A programme about women who are reshaping our world. We meet those who seek equality be it in the boardroom or at the village well. The 51% brings you stories from across the globe about the women who are challenging the way we think. The 51% presented by Annette Young on France24 and France24.com.